Y está con nosotros Robert Greene. Y les voy a decir quién es Robert. Robert es un escritor muy famoso en Estados Unidos. Es reconocido por sus libros que hablan sobre la estrategia, el poder y la seducción. Ha escrito seis bestsellers, que son las 48 leyes del poder, el arte de la seducción, las 33 estrategias de la guerra, la ley 50, este, la ley es la naturaleza humana, que es una maravilla de libros. Si no lo ha leído, se lo súper recomiendo. Y está hoy con nosotros porque... El otro día vi un post en su Instagram, que vale mucho la pena que lo sigan, que me llamó muchísimo la atención. Entonces busqué a Robert, que ya lo hemos tenido en el programa, y le dije, oye, quiero que hablemos del poder de la seducción. Y decía, el poder más grande en cuanto a seducción se refiere es tu habilidad de retirarte y lograr que otros te sigan con... El pequeño twist de, digamos que posponer su satisfacción. Entonces dije, qué cosa más genial, y por eso lo invité el día de hoy, para hablar del arte de la seducción, porque les decía antes del corte que hay mucha gente que nace, que es naturalmente seductora, que es, sin hacer ningún esfuerzo, es seductora, enamora, encanta, convence, y hay otros que no se les da de manera natural. Entonces, ¿cómo puedes aprender a hacerlo para todo? Para tu vida profesional, pero para tu vida personal. So, my dear friend Robert, thank you so much for being back on the show. Oh, well, so, thank you, Marta. I loved your introduction there. Yeah, did you understand? Because I, I know you're practicing Spanish. I understood so, all of it. Oh, I'm so proud of you. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, I read that, that, that post you put that says... Your greatest power in seduction is your ability to, to turn away, to make others come after you, and delay their satisfaction. So, like, that really clicked with me. That's why I wanted to talk about seduction. And I already told the audience that you have an amazing book, which is The Art of Seduction. And that's what we're basing this conversation on. So, yes. why is knowing how to seduce so important for your professional and personal life? And as I said in Spanish... There are people who are naturally born that way. But is it something that others can learn? Well, in the art of seduction, I have many historical examples. And there are plenty of examples of people who were born without any of the skills at all. And they had to learn it through, through various experiences and practices. And yes, there are people who were born with kind of a gift. But it has nothing to do with, yes, like yourself, but it has nothing to do with what we associate classically with seduction. For instance, good looks and beauty don't necessarily mean you're going to be a good seducer. Often it's the opposite. So we know for a fact Cleopatra wasn't actually a very beautiful woman at all. It's a psych, it's a skill that it has to do with understanding human psychology. And so seduction really is a form of power. It's like the ultimate form of power. Because you're getting people to do what you want, right? Which is basically seducing them without them even realizing that it's happening, right? You're, it's so subtle. It's so psychological. That they come towards you without realizing that you led them towards you, right? They're not even aware. It's like entering into a spider's web and not understanding that they're trapped in this web. So it's a brilliant form of power because in the world today, everything is so in your face, You know, advertisements, pol politicians, they're screaming, they're yelling at you. But to have somebody who kind of makes you come after them, that, where you're actually wanting to follow them, that's an incredible form of power because it's so rare in this world today. Absolutely. So let me say everything you just said in Spanish. Eh, le digo que, bueno, como les decía al principio, hay gente naturalmente seductora que así nace. Y dice... Eh, eh, Robert, que en su libro El arte de la seducción, tiene muchísimos ejemplos eh, de gente que no nació con esas habilidades o con esas herramientas de seducción, pero que con el tiempo han tenido que irlas aprendiendo. Y dice que la seducción es uno de los poderes más brillantes que existen, porque es tu habilidad de convencer y provocar que la gente gravite hacia ti y acabe haciendo lo que quieres que hagan sin que ni siquiera se den cuenta. Es como si fuera una telaraña que de repente la gente se encuentra en la telaraña, no sabe ni cómo llegaron ahí, 
este y no están ni conscientes lo atrapados que están por ti. Entonces, claro que es algo muy poderoso eh, y mucha gente cree que tiene que ver con ser físicamente bello y no tiene nada que ver. De hecho, eh, por ejemplo, Cleopatra, conocida como una de las grandes seductrices de la historia, no era ni guapa, pero tenía esta habilidad y este superpoder de seducir. Y entonces, por eso es tan importante que sepan que si ustedes no son naturalmente seductores, es algo que sí pueden aprender. Y por eso está Robert hoy para decirnos las cinco claves para volverte un seductor profesional. Entonces, el primer punto es aprender a elegir a la víctima adecuada. So, the first one is learning to choose the correct, the right victim. What right. does that mean? Well, normally when you're looking for somebody to seduce or somebody for a relationship, you're thinking in terms of, well, we have interests in common. We work at the same place, for instance. It seems like a natural fit. We both like sort of the same things. But that's not the right ingredients for a seduction. What you want is you want somebody that has a deep effect on you, that grabs you here, you know, that makes your heart beat, that gives, makes your blood run so that you have no real kind of control over it. You have to first be seduced by that person in order to be able to be a good seducer. Because if you're not seduced by them, what, what you end up doing is going to appear very mechanical and very cold and people will see through you. But if you are actually incredibly attracted to that person and you desire them deeply, they're going to feel it. Because we humans are nonverbal creatures. We think everything is about words. But in seduction is a language without words. It's a nonverbal language that has to do with your actions, with your gestures, with your body language, with your tone of voice. So if you feel that that person that you want to seduce has a hold over you that you're so excited about them, they're going to feel that naturally and they're going to fall under your spell. Do you understand? Did you get that? I got it. I got okay. it. So I'm going to say that and then I have a question. Sure, go ahead. Dice, a ver, importantísimo que escojas correctamente a quien quieres seducir. Mucho Muchas veces uno cree que a quien tiene que seducir es a alguien con quien tienes intereses en común, eh, que comparten ciertas cosas, que a lo mejor tienen los mismos valores, que digamos que racionalmente eh, tienes una buena justificación para querer acercarte a esa persona. Y dice, no, tú tienes que encontrar a alguien que tenga un efecto profundo en ti. Alguien que te mueva el corazón, que te mueva el alma. Alguien que te tiene seducido a ti. Porque si tú quieres seducir a alguien que no, que no sientes seducción por él o que no te ha seducido a ti, va a parecer súper mecánico y súper forzado. Porque la seducción es un lenguaje no verbal. Es un lenguaje sin palabras, que tiene que ver con tus acciones, con la forma en que te mueves, tus gestos, tus tonos de voz, los ademanes, no necesariamente las palabras. Entonces, por eso es muy importante entender que solo puedes seducir a alguien que naturalmente a ti te encanta. Now, this happens a lot, and let's talk about love. Um, If you're like madly in love and you have this platonic crush with somebody, um, so you want to seduce him or her, but probably that person doesn't feel the same for you. But then there's another theory that usually what you feel for a person is always mutual. So what do you think about that, you that are a master in human psychology? Well, I'm not sure about that. So let's say if you are excited by someone, but they're, they should naturally also be excited by you, I don't think that happens to be the case all of the time. Okay. I mean, that yeah. can happen. 
Oh, great. So often in seduction, you're facing a situation. I try to say everybody can be seduced. People want to be seduced, but you're going to encounter people who at first glance are resisting to you, are resistant to you. And there are people who it's going to be very difficult to seduce because you don't fall into the category of people that they would naturally fall in love with. All right. So in that case, maybe it's better not to choose somebody like that. But in general, um, if you approach it correctly, if you understand the whole spirit and philosophy behind seduction, you can break down their walls no matter who they are. But a lot, oftentimes you want that resistance. You want people, you don't, seduction shouldn't be easy. Yeah, the it's harder part they of the are, part of the game, exactly. The harder they are, the deeper the spell, and the more act, the more active you have to become, and the more powerful the seduction. So, not everything should be so easy in life. It shouldn't be someone who's just naturally going to fall for you. And so, that resistance is a good thing, I think. Okay, es que le digo que hay esta teoría de que normalmente lo que tú sientes por alguien, la otra persona lo siente por ti, que casi siempre es mutuo. Este, y también hay casos en donde tú mueres por un fulano o una fulana y el otro no te echa un, un, un lazo. Entonces me dice, sí, yo creo que más bien es lo primero. Eh, no creo que siempre en todos los casos, eh, cuando tú te sientes emocionado por alguien, es él necesariamente se siente emocionado por ti. Ahora, les voy a decir una cosa. Si uno este, hace bien su chamba, les puedo decir que... No todo el mundo puede ser seducido, pero casi todo el mundo puede ser seducido. Y esa es la gran gracia del juego de la seducción, que la seducción no es necesariamente algo fácil y que se da de manera natural. Eh, a veces hay resistencia, y eso es parte del juego, y eso es parte de la diversión. Y, y encontrar las formas de seducir a alguien que tiene resistencia a ser seducido. Entonces, encontrar la persona adecuada. Ok. Hacer que el objetivo se acerque a ti. So, the second key is making your object of desire come to you, instead of you going to him or her. Yes, well, it's very simple um, rule or law about human desire. So, we humans want something that we see that other people want. This is how advertising and marketing works. So if you're walking down a street and you pass a restaurant, you're looking for a restaurant to eat in, and you see that there's only one table where people are eating, you go, that doesn't look very interesting, even though the food might be very good. But then you pass a restaurant where there are 30 people inside, they're laughing, they're drinking, you go, yeah, that looks like the kind of place you should go to, because you see other people having a good time, other people enjoying themselves, so you naturally want what other people have. This is a primary law of seduction. So if a man or a woman sees that you are surrounded by people of the opposite sex, that you are desired by, for instance, with me, and I use this on the woman who I now have a relationship with. Um, we had, it was my birthday, and it was the very beginning. We had already had one date, and it was my birthday, and I knew that at my birthday dinner, that there were going to be like eight very beautiful women there who were my friends, right? So I invited her to that dinner knowing that they would, she would see that and that would up my value in her eyes and make her competitive because desire is competitive. So you want people to see you as desirable, that you have had a past, you know, like there's the tradition of the male rake who's had like hundreds of women. That's not a negative thing because it shows that a lot of other women desired you, right? So we want what other people desire. So you have to make yourself appear to be that object. If you are, then other women will come up to you naturally because they want to be one of those women that's part of your little group, right? Oh, so, so sick. That is so sick. <laughs> oh, my God. And there must be, like, all sorts of strategies to make that happen. There's even women that sometimes send each other, you know, send themselves flowers just to pull that off. Yeah, okay, I have nothing against that. Yeah. Okay, so let me say that in Spanish. Right. Eh, le digo que el segundo punto, se lo repito, es hacer que el objetivo gravite hacia ti. Entonces, normalmente lo que hacemos cuando queremos seducir a alguien es perseguirlo sin parar, y no es así. 
eh, uno tiene que lograr eh, que la persona te desee. Y Robert, que es un estudioso de la naturaleza humana, de hecho tiene un libro sobre el tema, dice que normalmente el ser humano quiere lo que otros tienen y que así funciona el marketing, así funciona la publicidad. Y pone un ejemplo un restaurante, si tú vas caminando y pasas enfrente de un restaurante, tienes hambre, quieres comer, y en el restaurante están todas las mesas vacías menos una, pues aunque esté deliciosa la comida, probablemente no te sientes ahí, pero si caminas dos cuadras más adelante y te topas con un restaurante que hay 30 mesas llenas, está atascado, la gente pasándose la bomba, automáticamente gravitarías a querer comer ahí. Dice, eso es naturaleza humana. Tendemos a querer lo que otros tienen. Dice, por ejemplo, yo estaba en el, el segundo date con la hora pareja de Robert, eh, que es una eh, directora de cine eh, en Estados Unidos. Yo sabía que era esto importante. Entonces, el día de mi cumpleaños, invité a ocho amigas mías, todas son súper guapas, sabiendo que mi pretendienta iba a estar en ese, en ese cumpleaños, iba a ver a estas ocho chavas. Lo que yo estaba haciendo era subir mi valor y tener una percepción de ser más deseable. Al final, todos queremos ser más deseables y es importante que tú te rodees de un aura en donde parezca que todos te desean. Yo le digo que claro, que qué enfermedad y qué horror, porque hay muchas mujeres que inclusive se automandan flores para justamente tratar de hacerse las que todo el mundo las desea. Pero es naturaleza humano y yo creo que todos estarán de acuerdo conmigo. Ok, point number three. Sending mixed signals, enviar señales mixtas, Robert. Yes, well, I said earlier that seduction is this kind of nonverbal language, right? And so part of that language is mastering certain gestures and tone of voice and the way that you look at people, etc. So I have an example of in the book of mixed signals that I can share with you now. Okay. Which is of this woman who was, who was quite beautiful, who was very angelic. This is in the early 19th century in France. She was very angelic, and people thought, you know, she was a virgin, that she was not, you know, she's very beautiful, but, like, nobody really thought of her as being this kind of sexual person, right? And she liked to play the harp in concerts in, in people's dining rooms. And what she would do is, as she was playing the harp, she would suddenly give a man a glimpse for just half a second that was very kind of flirtatious. But he, and then he would go and think... What was that look she just gave me? That's very strange. That's not her personality normally. She seems this very sweet, innocent person. But she gave me a look that seemed for just a half a second very sexual. And it made him think and think and think about her. And maybe she's not what I thought she was. Seduction is a game of making people think about you when you are not there. So they go home and they go... What is that person? Do I really know who, what they're like? If you're so obvious, if they know exactly who you are, if everything is so clear, there's no mystery. They're not going to go home and think about you because they know everything about you. But if you send them mixed signals where you, they think you're one thing, but you indicate the possibility of something else, they go, whoa, I don't know who that person is. That's very interesting. They have a side I didn't understand. They're going to be thinking about you when you're not there. And when they think about you when they go home, you, you're like halfway to a successful seduction. That is so much fun. In Spanish, we would say, jugar con su mente, like playing uh -huh. their mind. Yeah, so, exactly. Digo, ¿cómo que, ¿cómo que mensajes confusos? Me dice, mira, como les dije hace un momento... Eh, la seducción es el lenguaje no verbal más poderoso y tiene que ver con tu mirada con tu tono de voz con tus ademanes con cómo te mueves y hay una historia divina que está en el libro de Robert que es de una mujer en el siglo XIX que era muy angelical 
virginal. O sea, era, digamos que una muñequita que no rompía un plato. Y entonces iba a las fiestas y tocaba el arpa. Y todo el mundo la percibía como esta pseudo ángel virgen Madonna. Y de repente, ella, mientras está tocando el arpa, voltea a ver a un hombre en la fiesta y le echa una mirada que el hombre dijo, órala, o sea, ¿qué fue eso? ¿Eso vino de esta chava? O sea, no entiendo. Yo tengo esta idea de que es casi casi una este virgen de Guadalupe y me acaba de echar una mirada que yo no sé si fue como de tirada de onda confundidísimo el señor, tan confundido que se fue a su casa y no dejó de pensar en la fulana porque no entendió nada no entendió, o sea entendí mal, leí mal pero es que yo tengo esta percepción de ella entonces no creo que me haya estado tirando la onda pero esa mirada es que si sí era de tirada de onda entonces el chiste de seducir es lograr que la otra gente piense en ti cuando tú no estás. Si eres un libro abierto, si eres obvia, si no hay misterio de nada, si no hay absolutamente nada que adivinar, todo está dicho, todo está claro, todo está leído, ¿pues qué? Entonces, para llegar a esa seducción, hay que lograr pues sacar de onda, sacar de onda, diríamos en México. Regresando del corte, Robert Green nos da los otros dos tips para seducir, obviamente condensado de un libro enorme de Robert que se llama justamente El Arte de la Seducción, que se editó en el 2001 y que fue un super bestseller, mucho más largo, pero para efectos del programa estamos tratando de sintetizarlo y regresamos con otros dos al volver. No se vayan. Estamos hablando con Robert Green, es autor de seis libros que han sido bestsellers. Su expertise es la naturaleza humana y de hecho tiene un libro que se llama Las leyes de la naturaleza humana. Si ustedes quieren entender la psicología detrás del ser humano, lean de verdad ese libro. Y hoy estamos haciendo una pequeña síntesis de un libro maravilloso de él que se llama El arte de la seducción. Porque Robert dice que una de las cosas más poderosas... Eh, y de los poderes más brillantes es el poder de seducir, que es lograr que los demás hagan lo que tú quieras. Entonces, ya habló de cómo elegir a la persona adecuada, cómo hacer que el objetivo del objeto de tu deseo se acerque a ti, eh, cómo enviar señales mixtas y por qué es importante. Y luego vamos con el cuarto y quinto. So, we're going to number four and five. How do you create... Temptation. Well, the first thing is you have to understand a basic root law of human nature. Okay, so the people that you see around you basically try to give the appearance that they're very stable, that they're very secure, that they have ideas that they that they advise that they believe in, that they have a certain kind of life that is regular, they have a job, etc. They give this appearance of being very secure and stable. But underneath that mask, things are actually not, not at all what they appear to be. People are very insecure. They have a lot of doubts, right? There's a lot of chaos that they're dealing inside, but they're trying to present this front of having their complete act together. So you must understand that people secretly have these repressed desires that they're trying to hide from the world. Right. And they're facing everybody that's kind of trying to get something from them, like in marketing or publicity or et cetera. Okay. So they've tried, they've developed a defensiveness. They develop these walls where they're not letting other people in. But secretly they do, they want to give in. Secretly they want to give in to their fantasies. They just don't feel like they can because they're afraid. They're afraid if they let go, if they take a vacation with you, if they fall in love with you, that something bad will happen, right? So you must understand that people want to fall. They want to fall into temptation. They want to give in to you, right? But they're appearing like they don't. So you have to give them a reason for for falling for this temptation without creating that fear that there is so much excitement that with through you they're going to be able to live out their fantasy that they never lived out before and that could be 
having adventure. That could be a woman who is very kind of pure and and very, you know, um, moralistic and, and what we would call like a social justice warrior here in the States. But secretly she wants to fall for a bad guy, for somebody with lots of tattoos, etc., right? So you're going to give her the perfect excuse for giving into her fantasy. How? So, how? Well, that's the whole secret. You have to read that chapter. But you're, you're first signaling to them. So I have to tell you that seduction is a lot about things that are transgressive, right? You have to give people a sense that there's something naughty about you, that giving in to you means they're getting something they don't normally get in the world, right? So you have to figure out what it is that they're missing. <coughs> what it is, is there, what is their secret fantasy? behind that appearance of being so together and stable. And you're going to give them a taste of that fantasy, whether it's a trip to travel to some exotic location or whether it's going to a club that's a little bit out of their normal you know, circuit, right? And they're going to go, hmm. They're going to doubt. They're going to go, I don't know. I'm a little bit afraid. But fear and love and excitement, they're together. In the human brain, fear and excitement are circuits that are actually very close. So creating a little bit of fear and excitement, they go, hmm, I don't know. But yeah, I do want to give in. You know, they can't resist that. So you have to know what their particular repressed fantasy and desire is and dangle in front of them like you're dangling a carrot in front of a horse and they will go after it. Okay, that is so amazing. I love that. I love it. I get exactly what you're saying. Okay, okay so let me say that. Um, entonces, dice el, el punto número cuatro que es importante crear tentación. Y voy a resumir eh, todo lo que dijo eh, Robert. Todo el mundo en este mundo anda por la vida haciendo el saca de punta, el yo puedo, el tengo todo bajo control, y pues todos andamos aquí con esta máscara de que, de que somos todopoderosos, de que no hay bronca, de que estamos en control. Pero la verdad es que todos los seres humanos, y repito, Robert Green es un estudioso de la naturaleza humana, somos inseguros, y tenemos nuestros traumas, y tenemos nuestros miedos, y tenemos nuestros complejos, todo el mundo. Entonces, lo que tendemos a hacer es levantar un muro de protección y de defensa este, para eh, protegernos. Y dentro de esa protección es protegernos de las cosas que vivimos como, digamos que, un sueño eh, perverso, o como un peligro, o como una gran tentación, o como algo que nos pone en riesgo. Pero que en el fondo del corazón, todos nosotros... Tenemos estos deseos profundos, escondidos, que no nos atreveríamos a eh, hacer porque no nos vaya a pasar algo, no nos vayan a cachar, no me vayan a lastimar, no me vaya a salir mal, no me vaya a pasar algo. Pero de que ese deseo y esa tentación está, está. Entonces, la habilidad de seducir a alguien es entender... O sea, ahora sí, ¿qué, ¿qué le mueve a esa persona? ¿Qué le puede? Puede ser para alguien un viaje de aventura, puede ser para otra persona hacer algo que cree súper perverso. Eh, puse un ejemplo de una mujer como súper moralista, súper persinada, pero que a veces en lo más profundo de su ser le encantaría andar con el chavo malo, tatuado, aventureo, aventuroso, ¿me entiendes? Que se las afarranché. Bueno, entonces, la habilidad que uno tiene que tener, y por eso tienen que leer el libro, es entender qué le mueve a esa persona y operar ahí. Y a lo mejor la primera reacción va a ser, no, qué miedo, qué pavor, ¿cómo crees? Pero acuérdense, dice Robert, que el miedo, la emoción y el amor están cuasi pegados, muy cerca en el cerebro el uno del otro, y todos vienen como de la mano. Entonces, si tú puedes lograr identificar qué es eso, qué es ese deseo profundo y esa tentación que tiene esa persona, puedes usar eso 
para seducirla y crear esta experiencia, esta sensación, esta emoción que a esa persona le daría pavor vivir, pero que tantito si le encuentras, le empujas, lo vas a lograr. Y ese es un gran gancho. At the end, the last one, and I'm telling everybody they have to read the book because we're doing like a very small excerpt of, of a very long book, but poeticize your presence. Poetiza tu presencia. What does that mean, Robert? Well, that means that, um, once again, going back to something basic about human nature, is that we are creatures that live in our imaginations, right? We, <clears throat> there is the real world out there, but we live in our heads, we live in our fantasy worlds, whether it's through social media or through books that we read or movies that we see. So the human brain is like a machine for creating fantasies and for imagining things that aren't really there. Okay, and in our day-to-day -day life, perhaps in our jobs or whatever, we're kind of that mechanism of the brain doesn't get to, doesn't get to be activated. Our 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 jobs are so boring. The people that we encounter, they're just so familiar and 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 banal to us. There's nothing elevated about them. So you under, must understand that the human mind wants to fantasize. It wants to bring into action that imagination. You are going to be the magnet that attracts that imagination, that attracts all that fantasizing, because people secretly want to be doing that, right? So if you, um, what the, the worst thing in, in a seduction is to appear like you're like everybody else, like you're ordinary. Let's say, You know, that you, there's a kind of a badness about you that your reputation is you're a little bit of a, a rake or a seducer, that you're not very, people can't trust you. That's great because you're better than other people. There's, so, there's an aura that surrounds you. You want to have an aura or an image that separates you from other people. So we spoke earlier about when people are not there, they're thinking about you. That is the key to seduction. So if you surround your pres your, your, who you are in your presence with something larger than life, with something either very poetic and ideal or something kind of even a little trashier and a little more vulgar and, uh, you know, hard, you know, there's something about you. And when, they, when you're not there, people are going to be thinking about you. They're going to poeticize you. They're going to fantasize about you. They're going to surround you with all of the kinds of images that they don't get in their day-to-day -day life, at their jobs, etc. So the more you make people kind of imagine possibilities with you, you hint that through you they can actually live out some of their own fantasies and their ideals, they're going to be thinking about you. And as they think about you, an image starts to crystallize in their mind that, that kind of connects to all of their deepest fantasies. I, but I think, I think, and let me say this, I think that that is the reason why power is so seductive. Because I'm thinking of a lot of women who see a powerful man out there, and obviously he can be a vehicle to make their fantasies come true because they're imagining power, money, trips, jets, cars, clothes, an amazing lifestyle. And I'm trying to like simplify what you just said in the most vulgar form, but I think this is a very good example of what you just said. Yes, but not everybody's the same, so they're going to be women exactly. like that. But they're exactly. going to be women who have the opposite taste. They don't want somebody with money. They want they want an artist, somebody who plays the guitar, exactly. Exactly. and who, exactly. who's very much about ecology, etc. So you have to have that kind of image for exactly. them. Okay, so let me say that. El último es poetizar tu presencia. Dice, a ver, todo el mundo, todos nosotros, tenemos nuestros sueños y fantasías. Y pues somos parte de un mundo mundano de rutina, de lo mismo, aburrido, que de manera natural los seres humanos necesitamos fantasear y soñar para poder sobrevivir. Entonces, para poder seducir a alguien, tienes que entender un poco lo que decíamos antes, cuáles son sus grandes sueños y fantasías. Y 
presentarte como una persona no ordinaria. Porque lo mediocre y lo ordinario es antiseductor. Tú tienes que hacerle sentir a esa persona que a través de ti va a poder vivir esos sueños. Entonces yo puse un ejemplo muy burdo, muy básico, para que entendamos qué quiso decir Robert. Por ejemplo, por eso el poder es tan seductor, cuentavientes. Porque para las mujeres que estar con un hombre poderoso, con dinero, es muy atractivo, es porque al final, a través de ese hombre, ellas pueden cumplir su sueño y su fantasía, que es el dinero, los aviones privados, los viajes, las joyas, la ropa, una casa espectacular y un estilo de vida increíble. Para alguien más podría ser, hijo, es que me fascina porque yo siempre he querido ser mucho más cercana a la naturaleza y este cuate escala y este cuate es súper ecológico y vive una vida súper sustentable y bla, bla, bla. Entonces, para ser seductor tienes que entender cuáles son los sueños y fantasías de tu presa y poetizar tu presencia que puede ser desde volverte más trashy para hacerle sentir que a través de ti va a poder cumplir sus sueños hasta lo que sea pero entender cuál es la fantasía cuál es el sueño de esa persona y presentarte tú como un posible vehículo para que esa fantasía se haga realidad es sumamente seductor well, how many pages does the art of seduction have? I have it here in front of me um... It has about 450 pages. Exactly. Well, we just tried to summarize 450 pages in 40 minutes with five key points. But that's why I'm telling people that they have to read the book. El libro de Robert Greene, El Arte de la Seducción, son 450 páginas. Agarramos cinco puntos minúsculos que tratamos de presentarles en 40 minutos. Pero les digo una cosa. Si ustedes no son naturalmente seductores, tienen que leer este libro, porque esto les va a servir para su vida personal, pero para su vida profesional, para todo. O sea, ¿cómo creen que alguien acaba convenciendo a la de la fila que lo deje pasar? ¿O cómo crees que acabas convenciendo a la cajera de que te cambie el cheque aunque la firma no lo identificas? ¿O cómo crees que logras que te abran la puerta del avión cuando ya cerraron el gate? ¿O cómo logras que...? Es con pura seducción. So what I'm saying is that they have to read the book because seduction is for everything in your life. And like, how do people end up getting their check, uh, um, you know, changed even if the signature is not the right one? How do you get, um, you know, the stewardess to open the, the, the airplane door when the gate has already closed? How do you get somebody to change your ticket? How do you get people to do things if you don't know how to seduce? It's almost impossible. Yeah, it, it, seduction is not just about sex. Yeah. It's also about how to charm people, how to seduce them socially, or how to seduce them politically, or how to seduce them through marketing, etc. So it's, it's a skill that will serve you in all arenas of life, not just the sexual arena. Claro, es que dice la seducción no es un tema de sexo, es un tema de la habilidad de convencer, enganchar, enamorar eh, en todas las áreas de tu vida y, y sin duda alguna es una de las herramientas, como dijo Robert, más poderosas El libro existe en español, se llama El Arte de la Seducción eh, fue editado en el 2001, seguramente lo encuentran o en, o en librerías online y Robert Green tiene una gran cuenta de Instagram que está súper activo últimamente es Robert Green Ofi Official, que es Robert Green Oficial y en Twitter es Robert Green. My dear friend, a big kiss for you all the way to LA. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, Marta. I really enjoyed it. Your translations are better than what than what I actually said, so thank you. No, thank you. So let's do part two. Let's talk about how to identify yourself with the different type of seducers. Right. Let's do part two. Thank you, Robert. Okay, I look forward to it. Thank you, Marta. Thank okay. you. Oigan, eh, le digo que hay que hacer parte 2 porque en un en, la, en el libro viene una parte que es los tipos de seductores y cómo saber 
¿Qué tipo de seductor son ustedes? Cuenta bien, eso lo vamos a hacer después. Con esto nos vamos, estamos de